it's so important for us to understand that God is with us because here's the news. Not only was God with Joseph, but he's with us. And if we lose sight of the fact that he's with us, it will be very easy for us to quit on life, quit on relationships, and just quit on everything that God has asked us to do. But when you understand that he's with you, bringing you through, it makes all the difference. You guys know the scripture where it says, and if God is for us, who can be against us? Like God was for Joseph. And because God was for Joseph, nothing that came in his way would allow him to stop. And I guarantee you that Joseph adopted that kind of attitude, that can't stop, won't stop attitude. And let me be clear for a moment. This is not, this is not like a mind game you play with yourself. This is not a, just a mantra you speak to yourself. Like you look in the, more, in the mirror, can't stop, won't stop, and speak words of affirmation to yourself. I'm not saying not to do that. Do that. But when you understand that he is with you, it's not, an, it's, not a, it's not a motivational thing. It's a spiritual thing. He's going to open up doors. He's going to open up opportunities for you in the midst of difficult circumstances. We just saw that in the life of Joseph. I want to share with us three points today, okay, about this. Uh, because it is Pentecost Sunday. It is the day where the Holy Spirit poured out his spirit upon man and began to walk with the disciples. First point I want to bring up with you guys today, and it, it, it might sound common sense, but it's not so common. The Lord is with us. Why? Because the presence of the Holy Spirit is a promise. The presence of the Holy Spirit is a promise. We know the Father God, we know the Son Jesus, but who we really need to learn to have a relationship as we walk on this earth with is the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is the one that teaches us all things, reveals to us all things. You want to have a better re relationship with Jesus? You want to know the Father? You got to know the Spirit. It's as simple as that. The presence of his Spirit with us is a promise that needs to be remembered. Forty days after the resurrection was the day of Pentecost. The disciples, the disciples on that day were empowered by the Holy Spirit. It says that the Holy Spirit came upon them and they were able to keep going and carry out their mission. If you think about what the disciples lived up to that point, they were living with Jesus for three years. They had seen the miracles. They had seen the awesome wonders. They had heard how Jesus was going to establish a new kingdom. And they were excited because their people had been living under the tyranny of the Roman Empire. So they're, they were excited. And then all of a sudden, even though they heard everything that Jesus said, Jesus died. And when reality hit, they're like, well, we know you told us something about this, but, but what now? And when Jesus rose again on the third day and he spoke to him, he says, hey, guys, don't go anywhere. Hang around. He's going to send you another counselor. I'm going to send you another counselor. Look at John 14, verse 15 to 17. If you love me, Jesus speaking to his disciples, if you love me, keep my commands. And I will ask the Father... And he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The spirit of, of truth, who we know as the Holy Spirit of God, the spirit of truth. The, word, the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. Jump down to verse 25. All this I have spoken while still with you. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. I don't know about you guys, but when I spiritually understand, not just intellectually understand, that God himself, the Holy Spirit of God, is with me on a day-to-day -day basis, I, I feel less alone. The, the, the scripture where he says, if God is for me, then who can be against me? It becomes a little bit more real to me. To know that he is with me, and he's with me forever. He's not with me like some days and some days he's not there. 
He's not like showing up after he gets off of work some days and then just not coming home on other days. Are you hearing me? He's with me and he's with me always. That's encouraging. And I was, I was reading this. I, I started to think about for a second about how, how many of us live alone. You know, it's okay to live alone, but what's not okay is to live lonely. You understand the difference? Living alone, you can get comfortable in your aloneness. You can get comfortable not being around other people. That's fine. You can live alone. But what you cannot do is live lonely. Because when you're alone and you're lonely, it's easier to have a can. Oh, no, I think I'm going to quit. I think I'm going to stop. It's harder to have a can't stop, won't stop spirit about you if you're alone and you're lonely. Some of us live with other people, but we're living lonely. You know why we're living lonely? Because the definition of lonely is you're sad and you feel some kind of way because you, there's nobody who's accompanying you. It may be that you're living with other people, but you feel like people aren't accompanying you. Maybe you have people all around you, but you feel like nobody gets you. I'm encouraged to know that even if I'm alone or even if I have an off day, to know that I have no right to be lonely because his presence is always with me. No matter how hard life gets, the creator of life is with you. So we've got to remember, guys, that the Holy Spirit of God, his presence with us is a promise. It's a promise. The scripture that we just read said that if I know Christ... It teaches us that if we love him and follow his word, that he lives with you and he is in you. Therefore, if you know Christ, the Holy Spirit is with you. This is something you have to settle as a truth for you. This is something you have to learn to relate with him in this way. Point number two. I like this one. Danny, help me out in the back there. The Holy Spirit is stuck to you like glue. I know, it's kind of a corny one, it's okay. But the Holy Spirit is stuck to you like glue. Would you allow me to demonstrate why I say this? Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30 says the following. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Do not make the Holy Spirit sad. Do not embitter the Holy Spirit. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. With whom you were sealed... For the day of redemption. Here's one thing we have to understand. The Holy Spirit is the seal for our deal. Like our relationship with Jesus Christ was sealed when the Holy Spirit came. He's the seal for our deal. You were sealed for the day of redemption. 